There is no in-between when it comes to faith in God. Either you believe or you don't. Let's talk about that. Hi everyone, welcome to Mana for Thought. Today I will be talking about the mustard seed versus the mountain. And I'll be reading from Matthew 17, where the disciples attempted to heal a boy who was possessed by the devil, but was unsuccessful. Matthew 17, verse 19 says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto, unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Faith as a grain of mustard seed? And I can move mountains? What was Jesus referring to? Let's look at the mountain and the mustard seed in the natural. Most geologists classifies a mountain as a landform that rises at least a thousand feet. That's how granulous mountains are. And a mustard seed about, is about one to two millimeter in size. That is how small, minute a mustard seed is. How can we compare the two? Let's look at them figuratively, but first, we must ask ourselves this question. When Jesus said in the scripture, this mountain, what was he referring to? Some would say that the mountain he referred to are the obstacles we face in our lives. But I believe the mountain he was referring is the mountain of unbelief. The mountain symbolized unbelief and doubt in God and how greatly it stands in our lives. The mustard seed symbolizes faith and how just a small amount can remove the mountain of doubt and unbelief. Even in the spiritual sense, it's incomparable. Unbelief is defined as withholding of belief, disbelief of divine revelation, disbelief of the truth of the gospel, rejection of Christ as the savior of men and of the doctrines he taught, distrust of God's promises and faithfulness, weak faith. Doubt is defined as to waver or fluctuate in opinions, to hesitate, to be in suspense, to be in uncertainty, to fear or to be apprehensive. But Hebrews 11 verse 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Simply put, the biblical definition of faith is trusting in something you cannot explicitly prove. Mustard seed faith is where our faith begins. It feels very small and insignificant compared to what's around it, let alone when compared to a mountain. But where your faith in God begins, doubt and unbelief ends. Regardless of the size, it's an immediate action of casting the mountain into the sea, shining light into the darkness, setting the captive free. We may not have control over our situations in our lives, but we have control over our faith. To believe in God is to possess confidence in Him. To believe in God includes an acknowledgement of His existence. To be, but true belief in God is more than that. Scripture says that believing in the true God is foundational to a relationship with him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he hath cometh to for he who cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
Your belief in God doesn't remove trials and tribulations. Abraham's faith was counted as righteousness, yet he still had issues. But how do we obtain faith in God? Scripture says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible is unique because it's God's word inspired by the Holy Ghost. God's word which judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Bible reading encourages us, satisfies and sustains us and gives us and guides us through life better than any GPS. The Bible simultaneously reveals God to us, what he is like, what he loves and what he hates and how much he loves us. And, and the more a believer learns about the person of God, the more his faith will increase and the less he will doubt. Hence, removing that mountain and cast it into the sea. Believing in God brings you joy and peace in the midst of any storm. Ask yourself this question right now. How do I see God? What does he mean to me? I'm Alison Cornelius, and thank you for joining me on Mana for Thought. If you haven't subscribed to this channel as yet, please go ahead and do so. Touch that like button, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified when new videos are available. Thank you.